Welcome to the Fire and Earth Podcast with your hosts, Jason Mefford and Kathy Gruber. Fire and Earth, giving you the keys to unlock your limitless potential. Welcome to another edition of the Fire and Earth Podcast. I'm one of your co-hosts, Jason Mefford. And I'm Kathy Gruver. And today we're going to talk about feeding your brain. Brain? Uh, brain. The thing that's sticking inside our head as we're moving around every day. Mm-hmm, that two pound thing that's floating around in there. Yep. Mm, the thing that we use actually very little of. Yeah. Some of us less than others. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just noticing. I mean, not us, oh, not yeah. anybody listening, but you know, for you, those of you that have ever been outside um, or watched TV or any of that stuff. Yeah, we're not, uh, our objective here is to help you live up to your full potential. And by, we have to feed our bodies, we have to feed our soul, we have to nourish all of these aspects of ourselves. And one of the things that's not often talked about is what we're putting into our brain, those thoughts we're having, those things we're letting in, whether it's watching TV or you know, uh, eating bad food, uh, we still have to nourish ourselves. So we're going to talk about nourishing your brain today. Yeah. So and let's, you know, kind of like you said, let's, let's use the analogy because a lot of times people don't talk about feeding their brain, but it's just as important as, like you said, feeding our, our, our soul or feeding our body. And so we can use an analogy like junk food, right? Uh-huh. Junk food or even poison. Okay. If we, um, put a bunch of junk food into our bodies, then our bodies feel it. We feel sluggish. You know, if if you've had a a whole bunch of sugar, you end up having this sugar rush and then sugar plummet. Uh Probably people have gone through this, right? Or, or maybe you've eaten something and you got food poisoning. Um, so your body actually got a little poisoned. Uh And so when it happens to our body, we recognize it. And, and hopefully we try to do something different or, you know, change that. Uh-huh. You got food poisoning, don't eat that thing again, <laughs> right? <laughs> don't go back to that restaurant or, you know, whatever might have happened. But I, I think a lot of times people don't think about that with our brain. Uh-huh. And um, so I thought about this a lot because I, I, I see this, um, you know, and, and we put lots of different things into our brain in what we watch, what we listen to, what we see, the conversations uh-huh. that we have. Those are the types of things that are, are helping to, to feed our brain. And, and the good, wholesome things that we put in our brain, the good, wholesome things we're going to get from it, the junk food or the poison that we put in our brain is going to give us that same impact to our brain as it does for our body. Uh-huh. And so I'll give you a, give you a little story here because my uh-huh. uh, my father in law passed away a few months ago, uh-huh. and um, towards I I haven't watched the news you know sat down and watched the news on television for many many years uh-huh. uh, because I just a long time ago you know realized you know most of it's bullshit and they're just trying to scare you, and so I just kind of consciously choose to not really watch the news and realize that if something is important enough for me to know, I'm going to find out from it through some other source. Uh Uh So I, I, I haven't watched the news. Now my father-in-law, again, towards the end of his life, we would go up and see him more often. And he had a ritual. I mean, every night at at five o'clock, you know, when Uh the five o'clock news started, he would watch the news from five to seven, whatever the time frame is there. And then he'd want to watch it again before he went to bed. Mm -hmm. And so I would sit there with him in the room and, and watch the news. And, and at first, you know, it was kind of like, you have got to be kidding me. Right. I mean, I live in the greater LA area. There's 20 plus million people here. And, and the things that they found to talk about (laughs) were just crazy. Uh, You know, child brings knife to school in whatever. It's like, Really, that's what we have to talk about on the news. There's nothing better to talk about than that. You know, girl raped in the back of whatever sort of thing. So it's, it's, you know, they're bringing in like this very small percentage of everything that's, that's going on. And I could just feel myself almost getting depressed, Uh right? That as all of that is coming into my body, in my mind, that you start to think so skeptically of the world. 
and you start to think that the world is a horrible place where there's just kids bringing knives to school and people getting raped and murdered and bank robberies and everything else. And, and, and you start feeling that and we have to do a timeout. Hello, right? Stop and think because that's a very small capsule of what's actually going on in the world. But when we feed ourselves those things, that's what we start seeing. That's uh-huh. what we start thinking about. That's what we start believing. And all of a sudden, we can go to a dark place pretty quick. Yes. And so it's the, it's the, the equivalent of, of taking a little bit of poison in with that junk food that you're feeding your brain. Yeah. So the, the whole news thing is such a great example. And we are, we see what people, what they want us to see. And so much of it is, you know, spun a very specific way. And I know with what's happening politically right now, people are tied to the TV. And it got to the point where, you know, I would come home, CNN was on, I would watch it, I would get angry, I would get frustrated, I would get irritated. And I found that I was actually starting to get angry in response to what was happening out there somewhere, which is this thing I can't control, which is spun through whichever news network I happen to be watching. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I have some clients that literally they wake up in the morning, they put on the news, it's on all day in the background, you know, this next hurricane is coming through, da, 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 and that's all they watch all day long. And that is absolutely affecting then how we respond and react to things. And, you know, we talked about all these external things coming into our brain and how that's feeding us. But also remember, we have about 60,000 thoughts a day. 50,000 of those are negative. (laughs) It's going to be a negative day. (laughs) It's going to be a negative day. But I mean, that's just how, you know, our brain is wired to respond to negative things quicker than positive things. It's just, that's how we're wired to protect us. Um, So we are looking for the negative because it keeps us safe. We can plan for it if we know. But unfortunately, we tend to take that to an extreme. And I know a few years back when I was speaking in Jordan, um, first of all, I'm geographically challenged. So when I got very excited and said to my husband, I said, oh, hey, you know, I'm really excited. My talk to speak in Jordan was accepted. And he goes, oh, that's great. You know, you're not going, right? I went, why am I not going? He said, do you know where Jordan is? I said, no. He goes, you're going to want to look. And yeah. so I Googled it and said, oh my, oh my crap, it's the Middle East. And you know, when I announced to people that I was going and I was also going to go to Egypt, which this was one of the most amazing trips of my life. I was going by myself to the Middle East. People were terrified for me. Oh my God, you're going to get kidnapped. Oh my God, they're going to behead you. Oh, did you hear what happened to the girl? I'm like, what are you talking about? The girl in Syria is a whole different country, you know, um, but in hearing this input of all these people and all this fear of how I was not going to be safe, a couple of things happened. I started to lose my ability to tell what was my own rational mind going, yeah, let's be smart and safe about this. And what, from an empathic standpoint, I was sucking up from all these other people about why I should be so terrified to go. Um, And literally, as I'm pulling into the Jordan airport, I'm looking out the window of the plane expecting to see bombs going off and people running and diving behind bunkers because that's what everybody was feeding into my brain. And after so much of that input, I actually started to go, oh, crap, maybe I'm making a really bad mistake by coming here. You know what the worst thing that happened was? Nothing. Nothing (laughs) bad happened. I didn't miss a flight. I didn't get pickpocketed. I didn't get looked at badly. I mean, there was one guy at the airport who didn't speak English, and I got stuck going back out and having to check in again. That happens in the United States. You know, but it's like, we hear these things and we start to believe that it's true. Uh, and we start to act from this place of things we've heard and not what we actually know to be true. Uh, so I think exploring these things and asking questions and doing your own research to feed your brain, not only letting the positive things in and, and filling ourselves with positivity, but also learning more because the more knowledge we have, the more power we have. And the more our brain has to access options, then the better off we're going to be. We're not going to get sucked into this, this negative fast food thought mindset of all this negativity and the scary stuff. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I think, you know, for the listeners that, you know, that are, that are on, you know, with us now, it's, it's, it's like you said, you know, you got 60,000 thoughts a day. If, if you're feeling kind of negative, then chances are you're having more negative thoughts and positive thoughts. 
So, you know, if you start asking yourself some questions, what am I feeding my brain? And if you realize, hey, I'm listening to, you know, talk radio to and from work, and it's just people arguing with each other. Well, if you're listening to people arguing for, you know, an hour or two hours a day, you think that's going to help or hurt your psyche. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, and the same thing with the news or with, with maybe certain toxic people that you might uh -huh. be hanging out with that are also feeding some of those things into your brain. So, you know, if you feel that you need to kind of do a timeout and say, well, now just a minute, I pr probably should avoid these things just like I would avoid the junk food or avoid the poison. And now I've got to start replacing something else. Yeah. So, you know, you, you've got to take and, and change some of those habits. And maybe later we'll talk more about habits um, as well. But replace some of those bad habits or those, those negative um, routines that you've created and actually switch them with something that's actually feeding your brain something wholesome. Uh -huh. So reading a book, listening to music, listening to a podcast, uh, you know, watching funny videos, yeah. cat videos, right? Now they can get, they can suck you in, but watching a cat video would be better to your psyche than watching two people argue. Right, where they're talking over each other and nothing's getting heard. Yeah, it's the looking at something pretty. It's the England story that I tell in my TED in my TEDx talk. It's the you can always focus on something negative. Look at something pretty. <clears throat> And I remember when I was in, where was I? New Orleans, they have the World War II Museum. And mm -hmm. I don't know tons about war. It's not one of my go-to things to investigate or to explore. War movies I'm terrible at because I feel all that and I just get so upset I, don't, I can't watch them anymore. But I'm going through the World War II Museum and I do find old photos fascinating. And because of my medical nerd stuff, you know, if there's things about nursing or things about the, the medical aspect of war, I just think that's incredible. So I'm walking through this World War II Museum and it is room after room of imagery of you know men dying on the field and legs missing i mean it was just it was such horrible imagery and about halfway through i literally kind of stopped and i'm tearing up and i'm like okay i can't handle all this input anymore you know it was like when you think eating that pound of bacon is going to be a really good idea and then you get halfway through and you're like okay i'm gonna puke you yeah. know or all of the cookies and the package or whatever it is it seems like so much fun and then halfway through you realize oh this was a bad idea and halfway through i literally stopped and i pulled up my phone and i started looking at pretty pictures of animals and babies and like pretty things because my brain couldn't handle all of this negative input anymore. And uh, if you're familiar at all with Dr. Emoto, Mr. Emoto and his water experiments where he would take water crystals and freeze them to see what grew out of these crystals and he would give this water different input of like love and appreciation or he'd play classical music or he'd say uh, mother Teresa as opposed to you know really horrible music and yelling and negative things like I hate you I want you to die or Adolf Hitler or, you know these kind of things um, and he would then look at what happened with the crystals and the ones that had this positive input had these beautiful snowflake like crystals and the ones that had all this negative input had these horrible misshapen um, just ugly looking patterns that came out of them. And you know, we're 80% water. So if his research is true, and you can all decide for that, some people think it's total hooey, some people agree with it. Um, it's an interesting theory because what is our physiology doing? from having this negative input, whether it's, you know, the raucous loud music or your neighbors yelling or you yelling or you with that self-talk of that self-defeating, self-limited behavior that we're feeding ourselves through ourselves. Yep. Um, you know, we're getting enough negative crap out there. Let's at least change the one thing we have the power to do, which is change our thoughts and change our focus. So, you know, looking at Emoto stuff, if that's true, we are actually changing our physiology by thinking positive things as opposed to thinking all those negative things and letting that negative input in. We have incredible power to do that. Well, and it is. I mean, change your thinking, change your life, you know, is one of the things that I've heard before. And, and there has even been some research on, um, you know, you, you, your, your health improves when you become happier. Uh -huh. You don't become happier when your health improves. Right. So it's like, it's like this flip around. Uh -huh. So you've got it. You've got to be, you know, putting those good things in your brain first yeah. and then you're going to start to see those effects. But 
you know, that, and that's why it's so, uh, to me, it's, uh, I've got certain routines that I try to do in the morning or certain things I try to do every day uh, to try to help myself feed my brain. Uh Uh, because, you know, we get battered around sometimes during the day at work and, you know, on the highway, if we're driving and other things like that. So everything we can do to try to protect ourselves, uh, kind of mentally, just Uh like, you know, if we're trying to exercise, that's helping to protect our body physically doing some of these things, um, you know, helps us mentally to be able to make it through the day. So we don't feel so exhausted at the end of the day. And we're able to feed those good thoughts that lead to, you know, other good experiences, help us see the beauty and the pretty things um, that are, that are out there in the world, because there's a lot of pretty things. You know, we started talking off about the news and other stuff. Well, for every one of those things that's happening out there, that's bad, there's probably a million things that are good. Uh Uh-huh. And I deal a lot with, you know, people that are fraud investigators and compliance people and some, some, some people that they have a very negative job, right? I mean, they're dealing with criminals and other stuff. And, and sometimes, you know, they, I've, (laughs) as I've been messaging with them, you know, they just feel down, like this is a really shitty world. Uh And I'm like, dude, stop, right? You, you, you got to put this in perspective. You're dealing with Uh 1% of the assholes that are in the world. Okay. There are millions and millions of things and people and other stuff that's out there. That's beautiful. We just have to go find it. Yeah. So take the time to, to put some of those things into your body, you know, whether that's, you know, engaging in good conversation with people that you love, you know, making friends, uh, you know, reading books, listening to podcasts or other videos that are inspiring. Uh, A big one for me is music. Yeah, I really love music and, and music can totally change uh, your outlook and you can actually um, use music to create certain moods uh-huh. as well, depending on what you're trying to do. Uh, you know, read a book, do something that's going to try to improve you and help more of those positive things come into your life. Uh-huh. Because the more you focus on the positive, the more you're going to get more positive. And so if you're in fear, if you're feeling down and you want to change that, start putting those good, positive thoughts and and other things into your mind. Feed your brain the good stuff and it's going to give you good thoughts. Data in, data out. Yeah. Exactly. We can't. We can't put negative, we, we, we can't put bad stuff in our car and expect it to run as well. And one of the things I started, because I did want to, I wanted to watch something at night. You know, that was like my decompressing thing. I'd sit there with a glass of wine and I'd watch, well, typically CNN, which started to get to me, all the negativity and the yelling, like you said, people talking over each other. And so what I started doing is I'd turn off the TV, I would go to YouTube and I started watching old episodes of Whose Line Is It Anyway? <laughs> which great show. one is hilarious Two, I grew up doing improv. So it helps me with my skills as a speaker, as someone who teaches improv at to corporations and stuff like that as a, as team building and as communication skills, I would sit there and watch whose lines it anyway. And I would laugh my ass off yep. because these guys are awesome. And then I'd put on the bloopers from whose line is it anyway? Or <laughs> which are even best- better. <laughs> because they're bleep, they're bleeped out because, you know, especially Ryan Stiles gets a little, uh, yeah. Um, but no, it's like, but that was what I did. And I would go to bed, you know, happy and having laughed for the last 45 minutes as opposed to stupid God, CNN, you know, as opposed to this, this negative thing is the last thing you want to think about before you go to bed, mm, that half hour before we go to sleep, everything goes straight into our subconscious. If you're going to do your affirmations, if you're going to watch something funny, if you're going to do that right before you go to sleep because it goes straight into our subconscious and allows us to make changes. So one of the best things we can do for our brain is affirmations right before we go to bed. Write them out in cursive. Remember longhand that you and I learned. Uh, They don't even teach anymore. (laughs) But write that down. Put that in your brain. Go to sleep. Wake up feeling fabulous. Wake up feeling fabulous. Because I think that's a good point. You know, what you do right before you go to bed and what we do when we first wake up Mm -hmm. are some of the most important times in our day. And so, especially during those times when we usually control it, yeah, we, we usually get to control when we go to bed and when we get up. So, you know, take that time to actually fill that space with as much good as you can 
because like you said, it goes into your subconscious and that, and that has a huge impact. Uh, one that we don't consciously ah, ah, understand oh, bad pun. <laughs> it was okay. Yeah. Okay. We, we won't dock your pay or anything. Okay. All right. <laughs> cool. Well, that sounds like, you know, what we do before we go to bed, that's a fabulous place to end. So, you know, just to do a quick recap, you know, the same way we need to put amazing things in our body to nourish our cells. We have to do the same thing with our brain. Yes. Eating right actually is part of that, but also those things that we allow in those thoughts, those, that input from others, that input from TV and, you know, our own thoughts, we have to make sure those are as positive and happy as possible. And right before we go to bed, write some affirmations change things while you sleep, change and nourish your brain while you're getting rest. So I think that's a good place to end. It's a great place to end. And as you do that, you will be unlocking your potential uh, and you'll actually feel better too. Yes. You won't feel as tired. You won't feel as drug out. Uh, you'll see the world in a positive light and uh, you'll see all of those pretty and beautiful things that are out there in the world. Uh, which leads to more gratitude, which leads to more seeing those things. And it becomes this nice causal loop of just making you feel happy uh -huh. uh, and realizing that we're all pretty damn lucky in this world to be alive. Um, so go out there and do that. Feed your brain uh, and make today and this week the best that you can. Yes. I am your host, Kathy Groover. More information can be found about me at kathygroover.com. And I'm Jason Mefford. I can be reached at jasonmefford.com. See you next time on another episode of the Fire and Earth podcast. Bye.